Tomeris, spoken on the southern tip of Sao Tome, and Principe, spoken by only a few hundred individuals on the Principe Island. The country is endowed with excellent weather conditions for tropical agriculture. Cocoa, for instance, is the main agricultural produce of the island nation and it represents about 95% of the country's export. We are said to be the largest producer of cocoa in the world. Also, the rich volcanic soil and proximity to the equator has made the country ideal for sugar cultivation. Other cash crops such as coffee and coconut are cultivated in large quantity and has hugely contributed to the gross domestic product of the country. Tourism is another major contributor to the country's economy, attracting tourists from Portugal and other European countries. Most notable tourist destinations in the country include the Obod National Park, covering about 30% of the country with white and black sandy beaches and around 700 species of flora and fauna. The Bombom Island, off the northern coast of Pushpi, is a tourist resort and one of the most visit places in the country because of its beauty. Famous for its humpback whale sighting and the magical Cascata San Nicola waterfall, another beautiful gift of nature. Interestingly, the islands of South Tobia and Principe are home to a large number of birds. Yes, you will find the world's smallest ibis and the largest songbirds in the country. It is indeed a bird watching paradise. The country has a homogeneous culture, profoundly marked by centuries of blending elements of the dominant Roman Catholic Portuguese culture with various African influences. The kinship system is bilateral, although non traditionally are known to be polygamous. With the virtual absence of monogamous marriage, the conjugal system is characterized by high incidence of multiple and serial customary unions and visiting relationships. South Indians are known for Uswa and Sukub readings, while Principe is home to the Betsa Beats. Portuguese ballroom may have played an integral part in the development of these readings and their associated dances. <laughs> Kiloli, for instance, is a musical dance performance that tells a dramatic story of South Korea. And the Danko Congo is similarly a combination of music, dance, and theatre. The islands that make up South Tome and Principe are great for people who love nature. With about 30% of the country's territory covered by rainforests, and unlike mainland Africa, there is no threat of large dangerous animals or poisonous snakes. The only thing you have to look out for is mosquitoes. So, pick up that mosquito repellent and venture into the jungle as the smallest yet beautiful African country and her people are welcoming and peaceful. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day, NTA International is with you. In your living room, office and everywhere, anywhere. We provide a company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news programs, and the best of entertainment. Tune in to DSTV Channel 251, Go TV Channel 91, Freeview Channel 264, or live streaming via www.visiontv.co.uk. And to watch NTA International. We must work together to reduce the unnecessary deaths attributable to malaria and ultimately improve the well-being of students.
which was eliminating malaria in Nigeria. The love way to end malaria. Anxiety has given his paid records 32 suspected cases. The digital, scientific, and produced data that will guide planning within the context of global economic challenges. population and and Our focus on Good Morning Nigeria today is mitigating flood. The rains are here again with unprecedented pools and sadly many parts of the country are experiencing the gloomy reality of flood. One prevalent national natural disaster in Nigeria. Do we to appear that uh, the prediction made earlier might be coming true after all? And we call Jumai, the Minister of Water Resources, at the unveiling of the 2022 annual flood outlook in May, indicated that high flooding will hit 233 local government areas in 32 states and the FCT. Yes, indeed. And now, I think, started the warning signal since February, mm -hmm. you know, two months after that the announcement. The Nigerian Hydrological Service Agency says not less than 18 states are already experiencing flooding. And the NCT Emergency Management Agency on Tuesday with uh, a red alert of uh, the incoming heavy floods within the FCT and its neighboring state, Nasarawa. And indeed, that sounds to be very much uh, timely. Indeed, and the former says the impact based on weather forecast issued by the Nigeria Meteorological Agency, NAMIT, expects moderate to heavy rainfall between the 16th of August and the 18th of August 2022. Meanwhile, NAMIT has also alerted 17 states on excessive rainfall in the next coming weeks. The states are Sokoto, Kebbi, Zamfara, Katsina, Kamu, Jigara, Bauchi, Yobi, Gombe. Bodno and Adamara Oshus, Oyo Oshu, Ondo, Ogun, and Lagos, almost half of the states <laughs> actually really <laughs> affected increasingly uh, with the you know with the link between flood and uh, incidences and of course climate change. Uh, that are ob it's obvious now, and incidentally, Nigeria is not immune to these occurrences. In 2012, recall Nigeria experienced its worst flooding. And then uh, in recent history, and with total losses, put at about $16.9 billion. That was a huge amount. Yeah, and sure. despite tales of war in the past and the warning bells of caution by relevant authorities and government, it appears many states are not circumspect, as recent reports suggest. And then, barely two days ago, Monday to be specific, the Jigao state government confirmed the death of 50 people following the menace of flood that ravaged communities in some parts of the state. Sad there, and of course, this already paints an obvious picture. Hunt was displaced with untold hardship and more excavating in the dilemma this challenge will pose to farmers who are already limited by insecurity and the threat to food sufficiency. That's really sad, and experts are of the opinion that flooding constitutes a threat to Nigeria achieving the global sustainable, you know, uh, goals or development goals, I must say, by 2030. And now it will interest you to note and to know that um, of uh, the 17 sustainable development goals, nine are directly affected by, you know, flood. And from the optics, what lies ahead? is a story of the unknown with clear indications that the predictions are not mere tales. But the question is, how can this be mitigated? Or are we late already in averting more disasters with the slow response of states to red alerts? This and more will form part of our conversation on Good Morning Nigeria today. I am Jumbo Yusuf. Thanks for joining us. And I'm Yusuf Nadabu Sun. You're welcome to the program coming to you live on the network service of the NTA. And we also serve our complimentary segments and dishes as usual, warm as they are. 
And uh, for now, here is uh, the morning news with Comfort Amadou. Good morning, Comfort. How is that? Good morning, another one, Jumai. Mm. Here's the morning news. Now, in what could be best described as a bold stand against malaria and major public health challenge in the country, the federal government has firmly inaugurated the Nadrin and Malaria Council. The President Mandubari, who performed the ceremony, emphasized that eliminating the disease remains a priority on his administration's agenda. Additional advocacy and funding, the Council will bring to the malaria control drive. We can anticipate a reduction in malaria burden that ensures that our children, pregnant women, indeed all Nigerians, are shielded from the disease. And aside, one confirmed case of monkeypox virus recorded in the Boni state, 32 other persons are suspected to have the virus. The Commission of Health, Dr. Daniel Umezuriki, stated this while briefing on the efforts to curtail further spread of the disease in the state. We recorded one case who had a travel issue from Port Harcourt, uh, River State, and stayed for some time. And they uh, returned precisely on 7th of uh, August. I also enlisted all the contacts for uh, contact trace. So far, we're monitoring the no other person. Now to politics. The All Progressives Congress said part of its reforms ahead of the 2023 general elections is to engage enlightened minds that have the capacity to desist electoral manipulations. The National Chairman Abdullahi Adamu says the party's professionals forum will play an important role in realizing this agenda. This information don't take us anywhere. Don't take us anywhere. Any government. No government in the world gets elected just to do bad, to do nothing. Nobody has an agenda to do nothing. Put square pegs in square holes, and I believe within a very short time, the difference will be clear. Drivers of the 2023 population and housing census in Nigeria are optimistic that the census data generated will come handy in addressing the country's development challenges. This was part of submissions at a three-day retreat on the review of the 2022 trial census in Abuja. This retreat, therefore, is a necessary factor towards strategizing for the conduct of the census that will truly be digital, scientific, and produce data that will guide planning within the context of global economic challenges. Well, the UNICEF has developed a multiple cluster survey, which is a household survey to assist countries fill the gaps for monitoring human development indicators in the 2021, supported by the federal government to begin the sixth of such surveys in the country. As we launch this report today, the quest to achieve our development goals and objectives is still the priority of government, particularly towards improving access to immunization for all our children as and when due. Away from that, the federal government says it is committed to ensuring families have the appropriate incentives to guarantee continued participation in the farming business is unwavering. Minister of Industry, Trade and Investment, Ni Adibayo, stated this at the inauguration of a 15 month technical committee for the implementation of the ban on foreigners purchasing agri commodities from farm gates. To facilitate signing of executive order by Mr. President, specifying penalties and fines for violators. Indeed, the full implementation of the FEC approval will not just ensure that farmers get commensurate value for the harvest. Last news for now. Good morning, Nigeria continues with Jume and Nadabo after the break. Stay tuned. 
Eh? I'm dodging ammo. Oh, B, what exactly are you dodging? COVID now. <laughs> you are very funny. Oh. Is this how you have been dodging every cough and sneeze? Yes, my guy. It thing don't serious. Oh. Have you taken your COVID-19 vaccine? Leave that matter for my tires. I have had plenty of things. I beg you. I have taken my complete dose of the vaccine. And as you can see, I am okay. Why you come still they wear masks to protect everyone from getting the virus? It's good to practice the protective measures as the vaccine work now to stop you from dying from the COVID-19 infection. Eh? This explanation makes sense. Go and get your COVID-19 vaccine. It is available in most public health centers and some approved private hospitals. COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. Protect yourself and loved one. Take the vaccine. Stay alive. Let us all celebrate safely and responsibly. Oh, be the dodger. I beg you. I'm going to get vaccinated now, now. This message is from the Ministry of Health, Ministry of Information, NCDC, and PHCDA, and partners. If they ahead. You over team three and one. Smart choice for smart kids. Well, the healthy solution we have developed is a most precedent one. Uh, first, we have tried to lead a program to build what we think will be an acceptable and hopefully affordable housing based on surveys we did in 2015-2016 and construction that started 1817. And that's going on in 24 states as the national housing program. This message is from the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. 147 kilometer Lagos Ibadan Railway is the first double track standard gauge railway to be built in West Africa. The Modolaji Junction train station is a masterpiece, an infrastructure that is gradually becoming an iconic building in Lagos State. The modern facilities put the station on a world map of train stations. Likewise, all the new train stations across the country built to world class standards. The train and its convenience is indeed an admirable effort with commendations from Nigerians. This is a station that I want to commend the federal government for putting a beautiful face, empowering us in Lagos State, not only in economic and uh, political arena. I can say that I'm really impressed with the infrastructures in place. Kudos to the Minister of Transportation, kudos to the federal government. Truly, good things are coming out of Nigeria and the federal government is deserving of all the applause. Finally, the hero of Nigeria's democracy has arrived. He shall usher us into a new phase of development, peace and prosperity. He is the father of the new Nigeria. His Excellency President Muhammad Buka, GCFR. Welcome to another season of Giving Nigerians Hope yet again. We are sure of a great future for both ourselves and generations yet on board. We look forward to your leading us as a nation mm. to our manifest destiny. Though the challenges against us as a people are many, we know that your leadership shall set us on the right path to our greatness. A new dawn beckons on us all, and having you as our president is a precursor to this. Thank you for believing in Nigeria. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority and Thanks for joining us. Nigeria to benefit from UK's new trading scheme expected to cut tariffs on hundreds of everyday products. Let's join Alika Palachi Arua for details. The International Trade Secretary, Anne Maria Travenya, has launched the new Developing Countries Trading Scheme. DCTS, which will extend tariff cuts to hundreds of products exported from developing countries going further than the EU's generalized scheme of preferences. This is inclusive 
of the thousands of products which developing countries can already export to the UK duty-free and will mean 99% of goods imported from Africa will enter the UK duty-free. It also means that a wide variety of products from clothes and shoes to foods that are not widely produced in the UK, including olive oil and tomatoes, will benefit from lower or zero tariffs. She said that the developing countries trading scheme ensures that British businesses can benefit from more than £750 million pounds per year of reduced import costs, leading to more choice and lower costs for UK consumers to help with the cost of living. Gil Atkinson, acting British High Commission to Nigeria, said Nigeria will automatically benefit from enhanced preferences under the DCTS by saving about £500,000 of tariffs. The DCTS covers 65 countries across Africa, Asia, Oceania, and the Americas, including some of the poorest countries in the world. And taking a look at these tradings on the floor of the exchange. <laughs> With business news, Alika Opanachi Arua. And many thanks for the business package there. Coming up next on Good Morning Nigeria is the newspaper review. <laughs> And our newspaper review of our two weeks in the studio. Good morning, bye. Thank you, Yusuf. Enjoy. Good morning. Good morning, Yusuf. You're welcome, bye. Good morning, Nigeria. Yeah. And uh, we have some, uh, you know, some few papers here. The Sun, I think, and then the Punch newspaper for review this morning. Can we please start with the Sun and then see what we have up there on the front page of the Sun newspaper this morning, please? Mm -hmm. uh, the Sun newspaper, please, can we have it on the screen so that our uh, viewers can see exactly what uh, we're talking about here? Uh, but before it comes up, uh, let's uh, uh, be aware of the story there, the stories we have. And these include the one on the right hand side of the main plot that is um, talking about uh, Lalong uh, of Plateau State. Lalong begs Catholic uh, bishop over comment on uh, Pope says, I'm not perfect. Forgive my mistakes. Moving down a little bit down the, you know, under the mustard, we have the story that says, rather, it's about the big story on this paper this morning. It says, PDP considers role for wiki in Atiku's campaign. And why does R as a uh, reverse governor's uh, camp soft pedals on Ayu and then no party fighting yourself can win elections, says Wiki. Um to the right hand side the, of the picture there on the front page of the sun we have the following stories. And these include the ones on page the one on page twenty seven that is which says Nigeria will save two trillion naira from malaria, uh, malaria elimination. That is coming from the President Buhari. And Angote says, rather Angote chairs council to eradicate the disease. On page 26 of the sign, we have Diri laments 1,700 abandoned NDDC projects in Bielsa. I just Buhari to constitute a board. Details of that on page 26. And on page 20, Shekaru's rumored defection to BTP, I mean to PDP, I beg your pardon, triggers panic in NNPP. Moving down, Electricity Union rejects FG's appeal and insists on commencement of strike. That's today. Details of that can be got on page 25. And on page 6, Presidency will be rules aggrieved PDP leaders and say so rather meet party governors in Port Harcourt. Right under the picture there on the sun, this people will have the story so says insecurity is on fire with streets, motorcycles, orders shoot on sight as Lagos moves total ban. 
Details of that can be found uh, on page 4 of the Sun newspaper. And finally, on page 6, we have Okowa Storm's Plot to Dinja PDP members. Jimmy? Uh, we have the Punch newspaper next. And uh, above the mass head, we have Power Generation Force by, force by 503 megawatts. Walkers threatening strike. You find the details on page 19. Asu, LG meeting deadlocked. Lecturer stage walkout. You find the details on page 11. Bandits, IPOP members threats to 2023 elections. That's coming from the Bazaar, page 11. Why 7 million diasporans or the Nigerians unregistered as attributed to the INEC chairman? Page, like page 10. And by the side piece of the masthead of the Punch newspaper, U.S. group opposes Benin Brown's return to Nigeria. You find the details on page 8. And the headlines we have from the Punch newspaper PDP crisis. Atiku, weakest men hold peace talks on Friday with riders. A party that wants to win election cannot be involved in infighting. That's coming from Wiki River State Governor. Atiku's camp wants meeting to hold in Abuja. Fintry meets delegation, said sources. If I were Atiku, I would take next flight to Port Harcourt and close this chapter. Ohambua. And um, the picture story you see there, returnees of 39 children, 144 Libya returnees, arrived from Nigeria. You can see the picture itself, itself tells the story. At the bottom plate of the Punch newspaper, Matawa Libas, motorcycles, orders shoot on sight. Find details on page 28. Gunmen abduct Nasara Information Commissioner, demand 100 million naira ransom. Details on page 4 and 5. And 9 killed in Mochi crash, FISC blames speeding. You find that on page four. Why? Thank you, Jume. Let's start with a story from the, the Economic and Financial Crime Commission that reveals that they have been able to rescue 3.5 billion for the uh, for the NSI uh, Nigeria Insu Health Insurance Agency. Now it used to be Nigeria Health Insurance Scheme. Mm. These were monies that were supposed to have been posted into the single uh, Treasury single account. But they were locking somewhere in commercial banks. And on three occasions, the first trench that was recovered was about 1.5. The second trench was also recovered. And the third trench bringing the total to about 3.5 billion that was recovered, being hidden by the uh, agencies in commercial banks. Um, the Electoral Commission and Border Commission of Kenya has declared Mr. Williams Ruto as president-elect. The opposition leader, Raila Odinga, has already indicated his objection and is heading to court to challenge that. But the latest information relating to Mr. William Ruto is that his daughter, June Ruto, is now betrothed and engaged to a Nigerian. Dr. Alexander Ezeagu uh, got married uh, engaged to June Ruto in Nairobi. A delegation from Nigeria led by uh, Mr. Osita Chidoka led the Nigerian delegation for the ceremony. Uh, the, the Professor Ezeago is a lecturer in a university in Qatar. So we have an in-law relationship <laughs> with them in, 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 in Kenya. Go visa free. <laughs> um, tragedy has stricken in uh, Lagos. About 10 students who have just graduated from secondary school gathered at the Elegusi Beach in Lekki to celebrate their graduation. Unfortunately, they were swimming. Four of them got drowned. Well, you see, the, the, the pressure, peer pressure. Children, all of them, yes, let's go, we want to celebrate. Mm -hmm. Not sure whether they can swim. Swim or not. And that is the consequence of it. But sadly, uh, their ages are between ages 14 and 15. They were successfully in the last West African school certificate examination and they wanted to celebrate. Unfortunately, we lost four of them. Nigerian Meteorological Agency has warned again that between now, August, and the month of October, there's going to be massive flood. And the states that have been identified 
are the states of the Northwest states as well as the Northeast, and no state of the Federation is spared. The heavier flood are identified in the Northwest and the Northeast. A milder one is identified with the areas of the Southwest and Edo State. In the Bayonsa rivers and the South South, it is expected to be uh, lower, not as severe as other places. Is to alert the state and national emergency services to quickly begin to evacuate people from lower flood plains and also most importantly to clear blocked drainages so that we don't have a disaster already there have been flood massive flood destruction happening in Kamu and Jigawa already so those are the outlook for most of the stories here today uh, so do you have anything else? Yes, I'm looking at these 30 children, one of their portfolio girl returnees arrived in Nigeria again. Well, it has been I see somebody lying down, I think it's in gratitude to God for returning to Nigeria safe. Yes. You that, can see that, that on the tarmac yes. itself, just lying down, you know, I think he's happy to be home. Yes. If you are talking in, about this, you know, going on yeah. now, and that is an international agency that has uh, undertaken that sometimes with the Nigerian Immigration Service to facilitate Nigerians who are stranded there, most of them followed desert route, illegal routes into Libya, hoping to get into Europe. And when they are frustrated, many of them have been used as slave labor in Libya. And you know, Libya, because of its crisis there, uh, is potentially unsafe. And it has this is, I think, about the seventh batch of persons that have been fly, uh, flown from Libya to Nigeria. There are times that even our other neighbors, some from Ghana, are even helped to come because they want to run away from the situation and they don't have access. They had to come with our Nigerian brothers and from here they find their way back to their country. Even here they have those organs there. Well, they have find you there as a slave. Yes, okay. But so it's naturally, you know, this uh, is a source of worry that has been for quite a while and I think um, uh, the world is really worried about that uh, when you look at what is happening in the United States and of course in Europe and indeed Africa where you know people you know you know just uh, start rushing into other countries in such of a uh, you know, pasture um, but the facts here are nice, and that's a fact that cannot be disputed mm. talking about the sweetness of home the sweetness of home, no matter what you do, you will never know the sweetness of home. Maybe when you try going out and then um, you come back and then maybe right there or while well on the way or well while on the way back, you now remember and make comparisons. No, my home is sweeter than any other home because it's often been said by you. But um, you will never know the sweetness and the goodness of your own mother's you know, soup until when you test the neighbor's soup. Mm. No matter how the aroma is in the air, by the time you test it and then come back home, you now know that your mother has been a very good cook. Mm. And the aroma could be there, but uh, really the fact still remains that uh, even if it's sweet, you cannot get enough. Cannot That's get one. Enough. And number two, it may not be as sweet as you think it is because it's just the aroma in the air. And that's what's happening to all these, uh, you know, those fleeing their countries, especially from Nigeria here. As she said, when you look at what they spend also in moving out to anywhere else, in you can quantify that. In and when you invest it here, here right? you invest it here, start some business. I mean, it's not going to be, you know, a sad story no matter what happens because it's not a small amount of money. With 500,000 naira in Nigeria, you can start a good business. I know. Yeah, I was more than that. They pay millions. Most of the time, they are fooled by agents who fool them that there is a life better outside there. And it costs them between 400 to 500,000, which they pay because they don't have the money. They become slaves to those agents who mm. take them there. Mm. And they are forced into labor to pay for several years before they will get their freedom, even in a foreign land. Unfortunately, most of the female victims are forced into prostitution to pay for the cost of getting them across. Many of them in the process have died across the Sahara. Also, FG meeting, deadlocked. Well, the meeting was held at the National Universities Commission 
uh, the delegation of the academic staff union was there. That of the federal government was led by Professor Nimi Briggs. Uh, the meeting started about 12 and ended about, I think, three hours later. So far, there has not been any pronouncement, but the papers are speculating that the meeting was deadlocked. But the spokesman for the ministry indicated that the minister will provide a statement uh, between uh, Wednesday, today, and tomorrow, Thursday, and there will be a statement. But the expectation of everyone is that uh, the seven point demands of the academic staff union of Nigerian universities, uh, some of them at least will be met. And one paper is actually reporting that the proposal for university transparency accounting system has now been accepted. If that is true, it will go a long way in assuaging their anxieties about IPPIS. But we are not too sure about the other six demands of ASU to what extent they have been able to uh, narrow the differences and narrow the gap between their areas of agreement. Indeed, but certainly, if we must move forward from here, there has to be concessions. There has to be seven out of 13. I think it's a good bargain. I think yeah. the matter would help us. And I think the remaining six is not going to be that left and torture, as you say. There should be some, you know, concessions and bargains on the six if it's going to be met. And I think it's high time we start, um, you know, putting more prayers now into the whole issue because there is some light in the end of the tunnel, most likely with this uh, action I would we going back to school very soon. Let's hope so. As of today, the universities have been closed for 184 days. Six months, by yes. For God's sake, six months. That's yes. sad. And uh, well, that before, you know, we'll be, the whole country will go dark. As Last year, year. In in Russia, Russia, yeah. for nine months, yeah. we'll like another year. Let's talk about the strike <laughs> in the power sector. Yeah, we talked about that yesterday here. I think why we said, uh, we look at why they really they wanted to go on strike, really. I, it's funny to see from... Well, let's we'll just wait and see. But the fact still remains that we cannot, you know, we don't have the luxury, I must say, of, uh, you know, any other strike anymore, especially talking about light. Yeah. If the students are at home and there's no light, what kind of tragedy would that be? Well, yesterday, the perspective we, get, we had was that there were principal officers who were due to be promoted to assistant general manager. Mm. And there was a problem. And because of that, there was a strike. But the information this morning indicated mm. that there have been several persons who are old and their salaries have not been paid since the transition from uh, power holding company of Nigeria mm. to transmission uh, company of Nigeria. Yes, yeah. So there are so many of these, but the indication is that the Honorable Minister for Power is concerned about this and he's intervening and he's appealing that they should not plunge the nation into darkness mm. and something will have to be done about it and that has to be done quickly. Because we are becoming a nation of... Uh, Strikes, strikes. Uh, in Asian of strikes, strike yeah. happy. Mm. Uh, already in Abuja, the Abuja Environmental Protection Board is also declaring strike, <laughs> and tensions are high. And even with the flood in the air, something like that. Right. All right, thank you so much, Bayo. Uh, it's been a good discussion with you this morning. At least we've gotten some insights into what some of the papers Thank you too. Hope so. we can see you again tomorrow. It's good morning, Nigeria. We'll take a break now, and the program continues in a while. Stay with us. You clean your teeth every morning, but that fresh breath feeling just doesn't last. The answer? Easy. You keep your teeth strong and healthy and give your mouth long lasting fresh breath with new oral B to win one toothpaste. It helps strengthen your teeth and gives you long lasting fresh breath. So fresh, feel fresh, and feel fresh. Stay strong, stay fresh. New oral B toothpaste for strong teeth with long lasting fresh breath. The Council of our fathers. We urge and advise our own generation to use talent and brain to sort out problems, not uh, arms. My junior youth, let's build our nation together. Dialogue, empathy, love, and unity. These are vital components of nation building. For all to be well, we are pure. But we should refrain from volatile, provocative, insulting messages and language. Let's be 
destroyed and not destroyed. We are all Nigerians. Against all odds, we shall and must remain united. We may have our challenges, our problems, and setbacks. However, together we shall overcome them all. What doesn't break us shall make us stronger. This is the mindset that shall be progress and prosperity to our beloved country. Do not let tribal and religious sentiments govern how you think, act, or be. Don't be influenced by those who want to destroy our precious national unity. Everybody who's a Nigerian is your brother and your sister. This is the mindset of the new man. It is also the mindset that we must all adopt. Let us support each other in creating the Nigeria of our dreams. This message is from the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA. Okay. Well, welcome back. And um, to begin our conversation, let's take this background report by Abdul Salam Jibril. Blood knows no boundary. It affects every part of the world. Though it is a natural disaster, but it can be mitigated. It has always been an annual incident where countless of property, including human lives, are lost. With the Nigerian Meteorological Agency giving early warnings and predictions, the aftermath of torrents is still distressing. Expectedly, Nigeria has experienced flash flood in Dazo. Bauchi State, where people have continued to count losses after a flood in July. So pathetic is the flood at 19th Street in Bini, a state which ravaged an orphanage. Also in July, some communities around Samia Bridge, bordering Kano and Jigawa states became apprehensive after the Kano Kari Maiduguri Highway was cut off by flood, while Jigawa state has also been in the news lately. The coastal city of Lagos state is also at the receiving end after unabated rainforest, with different agencies of government assigned to carry out different functions to mitigate flood, people are still left in pitiable circumstances after occurrence. What needs to be done to reduce the effects of flood? Are the people so recalcitrant that they do not heed to warnings? These and other perspectives are what guests will analyze on Good Morning Nigeria. <laughs> We are discussing mitigating flood in Nigeria this morning on Good Morning Nigeria. And uh, to, you know, do justice, I must say, to this uh, topic, we have some gentlemen right here in the studio. And then um, it's my pleasure to, you know, welcome Engineer Clement Inze, the Director General, Nigeria Hydrological Service Agency, NISA. Welcome to Good Morning Nigeria, sir. Thank you. Good morning, Nigerians. Thank you very much. Also, here is Dr. Onimode Abdullahi Bandele. Uh, he is the Director of Special Duties for National Emergency or Nigerian Emergency Management Agency. It's a pleasure to have you. Good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, and thank you for having me. And we also have Idris Abbas. He's Director General of FCT Emergency Management Agency. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Right, um, welcome once again, gentlemen. Uh, we are supposed to be having two other guys from, um, you know, some from the states, but all the same, as we are with our connection on Zoom, let's get started and then see how good or bad the situation is and what exactly needs to be done about flood or flooding in Nigeria. The time is now, and of course, the, uh, the activity is ongoing. Now, is out there with so many predictions much earlier. And uh, we're glad to have the amateur uh, DJ right here in the studio who we should more like on that. Clement, I mean, engineer Clement, is it? Thank you. Uh, <laughs> everything now is on your table. You've said it. Some are happening. Some are not happening. Some are still coming to happen. I mean, some will happen. And then there you are. It's a negative story or true. What's really happening? Quite speaking, it's quite, uh, quite disheartening. I mean, the, the tempo it is pro, it is progressing uh, is is worrisome. Talk about the 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 local government areas in Nigeria, the states. 
that have been affected so far. And uh, what's going by our prediction we still expect to happen in the course of the year. By our prediction, we said that no less than 32 states mm. will be heavily impacted, what we call highly probable flood incidents, mm. with about 233 local government areas in Nigeria. And the additional 121 local government areas cutting across 35 states and their city mm. also, and that degree of flooding. But then, in the month of most of say, July, August, September, which is usually the peak of flooding in Nigeria, we expect more to happen. Incidentally, and the related main way, it has been so much devastation everywhere. And uh, it's mainly urban flooding that we are experiencing so far. Urban flooding. Aggravated by local rainfall of high intensity and longer duration. Then block the drainages within the system, within the cities or the loca locations. Like what happened, I think about two days ago, almost Abuja had almost a 24 hour rainfall. No matter the kind of uh, maybe at point towards the third end, it, you know, it was reducing, but it almost rained all day long. And we are yet to enter when the uh, river flooding will put you know we join the race. Every year we bring you here to talk about mitigated flood in Nigeria, yeah. and it's like uh, we are calling death knell all the time. I'm still going to stay with you. Experts are saying there should be a flood management policy in Nigeria. What's your thought on that? Well, that would be possible, but look, uh, we keep saying we already have enough structures, agencies, already on ground. There is no state in Nigeria that doesn't have time planning authority. In the city, we call it Development Control Department. There is no state in Nigeria that doesn't have a state minister of environment, state minister of water resources. And there could be additional agencies addressing the issues of in, around the environment. At the federal level, two major agencies have been talking, giving predictions. The Nigeria Metropolitan Agency, the Nigeria Health Service Agency, and all this information being read out from these two agencies are taken down to the states. What else do you expect to, you know, what else one expect? To have more agencies again? Well, I, I don't know. Uh, the challenge is that of not of non implementation, non going to work. The actions we see when the flooding has taken place. If half of such are dedicated to do mitigation or to do certain things ahead of time, we, we, we won't be seeing what we are seeing at the peak of what the way we see uh, this governor has relocated from here to social place. That's when disaster has occurred. Or social place has fallen. It shouldn't be so. In advanced climbs, what what's your casting agencies give their prediction? You run with it. Even individuals are at their own levels too. I think that's my, that's my position on that. We already have structures, regulations, regulatory bodies so, so far on Granite Group. If they are working, we will see the impact. And uh, one of these agencies is the National Emergency Management Agency, and uh, who is right here, they are being represented by uh, Dr. Onimode Abulahi Bandele. He is the uh, director of special duties. Welcome once again. Let's look at this issue of, uh, you know, agency work and function, and of course, against the background of uh, predictions being made about disasters in this country, most, of, most especially talking about flood. It's been there for quite a while, and I think that's one of the mandates, one of the, one of the reasons behind the creation or the establishment of this agency, to see how... Uh, to, you know, assist those who happen to be victims of such disasters, especially flood, and if need be advise government appropriately about how to curb and reduce or avoid or at the end of the day hold uh, such assistance through having them or having, having these disasters not really happening. It's a season of disaster. It's a season of flooding. And of course, your agency must be 
uh, on the red alert, uh, talking about what to do and what not to do. How worried are you about the situation at the moment? Uh, thank you very much. I will start from where the DG has stopped. But these predictions came pretty early. Normal as an organization, we had a technical session where these predictions were properly looked at by experts. And the outcome of that prediction was disseminated to states using our Zona territorial and operation offices. Uh, let me point out this to that it's unfortunate that we see disaster management in Nigeria as top bottom. It's supposed to be bottom top. Because these disasters we're talking about happen in a locality. This locality belongs to a local government. That local government is an interior part of a state. So when these predictions are taken to states, our expectation is that this thing should be cascaded, uh, cascaded to the end users. Like Dr. Uh, Angela has said, what we're witnessing now is urban flooding. I wonder what will happen when the rivers come up with volumes of water. What are we saying? State government to form an integral part of disaster management. Is there enough to get this prediction and keep them on the shelf? Somebody somewhere has to be responsible for ensuring that true implementation is carried out. And in the aftermath of what is happening right now, Nama is really worried. Worried the sense that it has become an annual festival. But Yes, people just wait on federal government. They bring food, they bring non food items, they bring building materials. This money that is channeled into providing this relief material could as well be used for other things. And one major thing I see that is still wrong that we must address is the use of proper waste management system. Even when government provides bills, Nigerians are in the habit of taking pleasure in dropping this waste along the road and in the drainages. We do say, if we are across, it will help us to take it away. No, if you are upstream and you dump your refuse, the man downstream is going to be affected. So, in a what I'm saying is the agency started with preparedness. We are waiting for a response. We are on the scene of a response now. While we are doing this response, mitigation activity to are going on. So that is when you talk about mitigation activities, and yes. that is why we are here this morning, mitigating flood in yes. Nigeria. What are the mitigation? I mean, mitigating activities you've embarked upon or you are on at the moment. Mitigation starts from even early warning, which we got from Mamet and Nisa. Disseminating this to end users, not just the locals, it cut across all sphere of our economy transportation, aviation, agriculture, water resources, name it. It is expected that people will take action, and for them, what we have done is to strengthen our collaboration with stakeholders. To ensure that messages on these predictions get to the states, to ensure that the populace are well enlightened and educated on the consequences of this kind of disaster when it does happen. Okay, uh, thank you for opening comments there. And um, you, you, you said all the reports should not be kept on the shelf because implementation must be carried out. I'm coming to Idris Abbas, Director General of FCT Emergency Management Agency. Abuja is on red alert. How prepared are you for any eventuality? Thank you very much. I would like to go back to your first question that you asked, um, uh, Engineer, about the strategic uh, management of flooding. 
and I think I will go with that because uh, with all the agencies, uh, it requires proper coordination of all the stakeholders. Mm -hmm. The problem we are having is that we have so many agencies that are involved in flood management, in, in the development and uh, layout of our, a city, but they are not involved in the management of flood. And if that happens, definitely we are going to have problems. And in the case of FCT, we have what is that strategic team of on flood management, which is uh, under the supervision of the uh, executive secretary of the FCDA. And that has been pulled, the membership has been pulled from different stakeholders, irrespective of what you do. As far as we are concerned, as long as you are a stakeholder in the FCT, you have a, 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 I mean, something to do to either reduce or add to what we are doing. And that has helped us greatly this year. If you look at the FCT today, with the uh, persistent rainfall, you have not heard of any uh, bad uh, flood in the FCT since the beginning. Uh, I know at, at the earliest when we had um, rain in April, which was not supposed to, to come to LCT that time, uh, because it was through River Kabusa, we had some flood around Lokogoma. But and all what we did was that we carried out an assessment of all the flood prone areas, marked them and, and then defined why we had flood last year, and then quickly removed those obstructions. And luckily, again, uh, the Honorable Minister of the FCT has given express approval, express approval that anything that is becoming a stumbling block for water to pass, we should remove it. As long as you do it illegally, mm -hmm. as long as you, you erect anything illegally, we are going to remove it without any notice. Without any notice. And then, if you think you have a court, let's move, meet at the court. Because he has vowed not to allow any one life to be lost as a result of that uh, 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 negligence or, or uh, I mean, a lack of uh, following the due process by the residents of the FCT. And that is exactly what we are doing. That is why on daily basis we are pulling down uh, structures. And apart from that, if we pull down any structure built on the waterways, you are going to bear the cost of that removal. Mm -hmm. and we are going to be prosecuted. The urban and regional planning law has allowed that. And even if it has not allowed that, we are, as FCT, allowed to borrow law from even Lagos and come and apply it here for the safety of the residents of the FCT. That is one advantage that we have other state doesn't have. And we have to leverage and make very good use of that. And that is exactly what we are doing on a daily basis. Apart from that, we are sensitizing the public because we believe the public need to be educated. They need to know what to do before the flooding, during the flooding, and after the flooding. And this is what we are doing. And we are not sparing anybody. Those who have built on the waterways, we have called them, and we have told them, and we are going to, to remove it. We don't need, we, they don't need any notice. Because anybody who erected building any structure illegally, you don't need to give him her notice. So it's going to be pulled down. Then if you have any reason why that should not be pulled down, you can go to the court. Then we meet there. So these are the things that we're doing. And like I said, sensitizing the public is one key aspect that we believe is really helping us. Because most times people don't know that they need to do certain things before another thing. So but now they are, they are now getting used to it. And we're showing them live videos of events. Initially, we used to borrow videos from America and all this. We, but now we have live videos. If you are in doubt, go to DD. If you are in doubt, go to Hali. If you are doubt, in doubt, go to Kuba. It's live. You will go there, you interact with the people who were affected, and they will tell you, yes, we were affected by flood and this and that. So you will know that it's real. Majorly, most of the problems that we are having is people running or driving in a running water. On a running water. These are the 
the major problem that we have in the city. Which uh, the FRC have warned against. Every day we have been, we have been, we have jingles. We have been showing videos of even a trailer loaded that water carried away. You know, so it can with your small car it, you can go. And most of the deaths in the FCT were as a result of that kind of attitude. So we are appealing to the resident of the FCT to obey. Just flash flooding for ten to fifteen minutes, it will pass, mm. and then you will now drive away to go to your work or to go to your home. So these are the things that we are putting in place and we are engaging the communities with our local volunteers, with our local divers, and with all our responders, which we believe that uh, they speak the language of their, the dialect of their communities, and that is the best way to communicate to the community and get this result. Well, that's uh, really heartwarming, Idris Abbas, and of course, um, it is because when you look back a little bit prior, I mean, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, it rained ceaselessly throughout the F city and some other states and neighboring uh, towns and cities. And one would think that at least knowing what F city is, the looking at the history last year, last two years, there will be some flooding, but we didn't hear much of that. That's a great work. Congratulations for that. Now we'll come back to the issue of collaboration here because you may sound, you know, you're not the spokesman for the states, but you are part of the states, yeah. I must say. Yeah. In the meantime, we have um, Hamza Mohammed, the Senior Special Assistant uh, Community and Social Inclusion, who is also the Chairman Jigawa State Flood Control Committee, uh, joining us from uh where is the mama say you welcome to good morning nigeria morning. um uh, let's 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 hear the story now you're right here we've been waiting for you um for the past one week or so it's been jigawa in the news talking about flood and flooding and it's been not a good story i must say because there are lives lost, property destroyed, infrastructure, you know, I mean, uh, wrecked away by this uh, disaster. Um, how bad has been the situation in your state? And uh, what efforts have been made really to a sort of, you know, curtail further occurrence? Thank you very much. Uh, very good morning to you all. Uh, uh, if you are aware, we are we are experiencing uh, but uh, due to the uh, high level of rainfall uh, in the state, uh, in the past August uh, of this uh, year, 2022, uh, there is a heavy rainfall in the Dallas state which lasted for about 30 hours, uh, which uh, never had to be of in uh, the Dallas state. Uh, we seem to be having a problem with your audio. It's not very clear. It's cracking. Can you please work on your audio so that when you get back to us, we can really get the drift of what the message you're trying to pass across. Yes, you're well, welcome back. Uh, we've just gone to Jigawa and he's talking. We're not really hearing him, but 
some sub nationals, like you said earlier, they seem to be resting on their oars despite relevant agency warning year in, year out. 50 people have lost their lives in Jigawa now. It's a very, very sad story. What kind of synergy do you have do you have with states and how effective is your line of communication with them? <coughs> so the my agency all of it we do we then advisory level. Once we are doing like, once we do our prediction, the details of that prediction is sent to each state. We extract what belongs or what affects each state and flow to each of the states, to their state governors. Mm. So each, each state governor is aware from our report that these are the details of the prediction for their own state. It's really a few states that respond to us. Jigawa is one of them. I can say a bit about uh, Jigawa. I can say much about KB State. Anambra also. That we want to hear from us. Even after they have received our information, they want to know further. Updates. As we speak, some, somebody at a very high top level in, in the Bayelsa State is asking questions. What are we what are we expecting in Bayelsa? Mm -hmm. So so in fact he was even giving me death a the particular day. Not just a making a blanket prediction. This is what we expect. So we try the best we can at our own level to collaborate with the states. But the response is not commensurate with the effort we make. For instance, before we go on air, before the onset of flooding, we invite the states. The Honorable Minister of Water Resources, Jinashile Maladami, always sends letters to all the governors, inviting them or their representatives to be available. And in those letters, it always listed these are the local government areas in your state. Like to these are the things you should begin to do if not yet in place already but to our dismay like i said earlier the response from the states is not in tandem with the quantum of information we give to them so it it's it's a bit painful but it is at the peak of flooding like this we begin to see actions at the state levels, like the only mentioned, so much will be spent at this time. We our lives have been lost. Instead of you know directing those energies or resources before the onset of a flooding, it is not done. So at our side, we try as much we can to collaborate with the states. There's a good collaboration between us, the agency. And the other stakeholders like NIMET, NEMA, the FCT is there. I forgot to mention even the executive secretary of the FCDA. We speak from time to time. This is the DG of FEMA here, FCT Management Agency. So we, we do a lot. We even use, uh, work with NOA to help us. Since we have offices in the 774 AGS, please help us send the messages down. But it is response or the action. At the state levels, that is the problem. Well, um, uh, engineer Clemens seems uh, I must really sympathize with you having to be doing one thing on and on and on yes. for years. Thank you. And not really getting the results you require. Yeah. And unfortunately, it doesn't just stop there. You know, lives and property are being lost on and on. It's painful, really. We'll get back to that issue later okay. on and then see what can be done about the subnationals in this regard. Let's go back to. You know, Jigawa or Duty, I must say, and then uh, here are much more from, uh, you know, Hamza Muhammad, who was speaking to us earlier on, but had a poor audio, you know, we have bad audio now. I think um, 
uh, the, his voice can be heard so much. Can we hear you very much clear, loud and clear now? And then, uh, uh, if you can hear us, we really want to hear more about what you were saying earlier, the situation in Jigawa, how pathetic and bad it is, and what the government is doing about it. Thank you so much. The situation in Jigawa said about the issue of uploading is very bad, and uh, we experienced a heavy rainfall uh, uh, this August from past uh, to second of about 30 hours. So the rainfall distracted uh, many farmlands, caused uh, the loss of lives and properties in the state, which it is very uh, tragedy to the people of Jigawa State. And uh, the heavy rainfall uh, this time. Uh, it reached the maximum of about 175 millimeter uh, as measured by our meteorological station in the state, which uh, people uh, observe that it takes almost over 30 years without experiencing such kind of heavy rainfall. The second uh, is the flooding that come from the dams of Tiga, uh, where the Tiga, uh, the people from Hadez Jama are has wrote a letter to the government of Jiga State for the release of water. This uh, release of water makes the, uh, the river to become, uh, the water become so, to come in a high level and high volume, which uh, causes a serious problem for the damages of thousands of hectares in the state. Uh, from what uh, we observe uh, during our visit, we see a lot of palm lands across the state. Over, over 70,000 hectares now has been submerged with water. And almost 65% of the total Padama lands has been destroyed, which uh, it may expect that uh, the Jigawa state may experience a shortage of food uh, during this uh, season as a result of this uh, heavy rainfall and that uh, uh, flooding from the dam release. Uh, this is the current situation we are here in Jigawa state. But uh, His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Jigawa state, Muhammad Badr Abubakar, has constituted the committee in order to assess the level of damages. And to propose solutions that will prevent the further occurrence, the occurrence of that uh, flooding in the state. So we are working effectively to see the extent of the flood damages and to see how best the government will come up to support the communities that are affected with such kind of flooding. One, we have uh, IDP centers that the government is supporting. Uh, and the number two, uh, the government of Jigawa also link uh, alias with the Hadith Jama Arab officials and working to see how best we can address the minas that cause the flooding. One, we have so many, uh, in addition, we have so many problems along the waterways. One is the uh, siltation at the upstream uh, of the state. Second uh, is the diversion of the river. Uh, the diversion is of two kinds. One, there is a natural diversion and the second is the artificial diversion. Uh, that is a human induced. Uh, and at the downstream of the state, we have the infestation of tiger grass that uh, uh, block the water waste and cause the flooding. And with these instances, His Excellency has already procured two numbers of boogie excavator machines. And uh, the machines is now ready in the state, and we are uh, giving training to the uh, operators on how to operate the machine in order to work on the river to desilt and remove all the aquatic weeds and to remove all such uh, deep uh, uh, sediment that block the river in order to the allow the in order to allow the free flow of the water from up to downstream. This uh, may eventually relieve or to mitigate the level of flooding to give uh, more access of uh, flowing water downstream. If I may stay with you for a while, um, Hamza Mohammed, Jigawa stayed has been warned just like so many states in this country about the flood issue this year um the predictions have been there and so many states have been told about how bad it is going to be for them by the time it rains and that's as far back as february or march are there about and even before then last year and last uh, the, a couple of years ago all these warnings have been sent out before the rain started but unfortunately it's so seem as if Across the subnationals and most especially in Jigawa State and some other states, these warnings are not so much heated, and that causes the kind of calamity we have at our, I mean, on our hands right now. Um, I don't know. Haven't you looked at this from a positive point of view when the you know predictions are being poured out by Namit? Yes, we received the letter 
uh early this year from the NEMA and the NINET uh, after the stakeholders meeting with National Habilitated Service in Abuja, the letter has come to Jigawa State uh, indicating the changes of the climate and the expectation of reduction of the flooding this year. Uh, His Excellency uh, constituted the committee, as I said earlier, we are working to see how best we can work to prevent the, uh, the, the flooding in the state. So we have the preventive measures and we also have the proactive measures when it happens. So uh, one of the preventive measures we are taking, uh, we started uh, visiting the areas where affected last year and they see the level and the extent of the damages and they see how best we can work to address the problem. One, we are working with machines heavy equipment in order to embank, make an embankment dry at the critical areas where the flooding uh, is affecting the community. And the second, we are mobilizing the communities along the waterways to have a communal work and to support them with all necessary logistics that they can be able to work together with the government and the community to address the problems through making a manual embankment where the machine cannot reach. So after that, uh, we also have uh, working together hand in hand uh, with the advice of Hadis Jamaari River Basin and the National Water Research Institute uh, to see how best we can work to find out the solution, a lasting solution for the dredging of the river. That is why the government of Jigawa State has procured, as I said earlier, two members from Bugi excavators. That amphibious excavators are now in Jigawa State, and it will start working soon to see how we can remove all the filtration. So the major challenges uh, in the course upon the course of this flooding in Jigawa State is the filtration. So the main canal of the river is so narrow. So when the water comes in a high volume, so that it will separate all over, destroy palm land, destroy houses and the even cost rate the people or communities living along the river or uh, waterways. So this the measures have been taken by the government to see how we can address and remove all that uh, sediment uh, by expanding the river on its deeps with to ensure both sides and bankment so that when the water comes, not especially when the dams open or release their water so that the water can flow smoothly up to downstream without being straight. So we are working uh, effectively, uh, we are working seriously on that, and uh, we are working together with the expert. And even today, there is a committee that is working at Hadiz Jama'ari, together with the expert in that uh, river basin, because Hadiz Jama'ari is a custodian of the river, so that we are working together with them to give us all possible advice, and even to supervise the way we are going to conduct the dredging, to remove and to open where there is the problems, and more especially at the downstream, where the infestation of tartar grass is, too, is so big, so that we can remove, we are working to remove it, so that when we succeed in such kind of uh, working to remove uh, the tartar grass, uh, we believe uh, in a year's coming, so that the plot will become, uh, will reduce uh, to the maximum level, so that the plotting will be reduced. But uh, you, you, can, you can know that uh, after the water uh, release from the dam, there's a heavy rainfall, uh, the heavy rainfall is the something natural from the Almighty God, so that you cannot predict or determine the con the content of the water that will come down as it come this year before the the, uh, the flooding that uh, usually come from the from, from the, from the dam. The so heavy rainfall destroy most of our. Family. If I may come in there, Hamza Mama, we are going to stay with you so that we can make the best use of your Zoom network before we let you go and join other guests in the studio. Rain is a natural phenomenon, and year in, year out, it takes a year before the next rain comes. And preparation, people assume, should be in process before the rains comes. You've talked about shortages of food. You might have food insufficiency in your state due to the farmlands being flooded by water. My question is, how have you been able to educate your farmers on how to protect and take, you know, uh, steps into improving and protecting their farms towards food sufficiency and how prepared are you to cushion the effect of this devastating uh, disaster that, is, that has come to Jigawa. We do condole with you over the loss of lives during the few days that just passed but it takes a year for you to prepare all this. Where did you start and how far have you gone? 
Thank you, Jaris. Uh, after receiving this uh, message for, for the prediction of expected uh, flooding in the state, uh, there is uh, measures taken by the government. One is the sensitization, public sensitization within groups, most especially the groups that are living along the river line. So the sensitization are conducting uh, a more special resource for a living to, uh, to be on alert to avoid uh, making artificial canals along the river route to to be away from making all structures in the plan areas and also the government take actions whosoever make that uh, artificial region the action must be taken against them and uh, the government uh, will not leave such kind of people that are creating artificial channels because it is one of the act in the water law that nobody is going to create a uh, uh, channels that is not an initial channel so we are making all possible ways for making sensitization in our communities and the, the government is also working most of say, in the urban cities to have a drainage culvert and the uh provide uh the ways that water if it come it will run without uh, uh making uh uh creating problems to our so for communities in the state Thank you so much, uh, Hamza Mohammed. We will get back. We'll go back to you later on. Let's now come back to the studio and then um, hear some more views about uh, how to mitigate flood in Nigeria. Um, but uh, anyway, there. Um, <clears throat> emergency management. It's an issue that deals with uh, things that happen that are not planned and they happen. And when they happen, you know, you start to address it as it were. Uh, with your own efforts and your own mandate. But nonetheless, these are things that have been occurring year in, year out. As you earlier pointed out in your opening salvo, you said, you know, people are just there waiting when it happens, then maybe the festival will start, the festival of uh, relief distribution, and there we are. The issue of relief distribution, sometimes some people argue that government coming in with relief year in, year out may be a contributory factor to the prevalence of you know this hardship hardship in the sense that people will not want to move away from where the disaster is because they know that whenever there is a disaster and the season is going to come some other things are going to come now from the government i have an instance here let me just be specific in adamawa city where i come from as a junior reporter then in uh, adamawa television corporation yola there is a place called loco and that place is a flood plan a flood plan area it's a very busy area very commercial area and um every year you know this this settlement is being displaced by flood and we've been trying to get them to leave that place and maybe get them resettled somewhere which the state government did and you know sort of uh, provided a resettlement for them and constructed houses for them but they refused to move the questions have been why are you staying there two answers always come up one this is our ancestral land yeah. we will not leave this place because this is where our chibia if i may call it in house <laughs> our <laughs> mother has been buried yeah. so these are grand 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 grandfather's land number two we don't know what we are going to meet wherever we are going to go just like i asked any somebody sometimes and he answered me by saying by asking me another question that is why do people don't want to die and I said, why? He said, because we don't know what, to, what we are going to meet. You see that paradise of hell. But if we're sure of what we are going to meet, we are going to go there. So, how have we been looking at this, uh, this kind of thinking and perception in view of the fact that Nigerians are losing a lot of money in relief materials to these people who have refused, I'm sorry to use that strong word, who have refused to really adhere or heed to warn us before the disaster falls. Yeah, thank you very much. I really want to see provision of relief material as one of the reasons why people refuse to live. Like I said, NEMA is not an enforcement agency. Ours is one to coordinate resources, pass information to the public, and I will see impressed on my years that the state government have a major role to play in 
resettling or settling people that are affected by flood. Like the scenario you just gave. You can achieve a lot by persuasion to those people living in flood-prone area. You relocate them from that area and you educate them that when the growing season starts, they can go back to their farmland. Mm -hmm. But this you must do too by providing any maturing crops, improve a crop of improved variety such that they can always get their crops to the field, get it harvested before the flooding comes. You see, unfortunately, most of us don't know that when flooding occurs, it is even blessing in disguise if we do the needful. You move the people up uh, to higher ground, they come to do their farming at the early onset of the rain, they do early harvest. When the rain comes, it brings along with it alvea, alvea, uh, alvea soil mm -hmm. that you can use to do a second stream of farming. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, what we are advocating and we are appealing to state is please let's appeal to people that live in flood prone communities and educate them. The idea is we must educate them. And so, so I realize that attachment by Africans to where they were born. But if we educate them and we tell them the safety implication of abiding by the advice of government, I think it will go a long way to help our situation in Nigeria. Okay, let me come to Idris Abbas. Uh, you know, people are saying that, experts actually are saying that Abuja should not have any flood because it is a well-planned city. Now you're talking about demolition structures that are on the waterways. And experts are also saying that the lack of relevant legal laws and policy frameworks is an indication of low importance given to controlling and managing flooding in Nigeria, especially in a place like Abuja, which is a well-planned city. Educating the people itself, what kind of means or conduit are you using to educate these people? And if there's a legal framework, who is selling the land to these people who build on the waterways? Is it just the person that builds on the waterways that is now punished? Or should the people selling the land to them be brought into the picture too? Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, you are right to say that Abuja is well planned. I always say 40, over 40 years ago, those who plan Abuja did not expect that there is going to be uh, um, um, climate change. But they were able to really uh, mark the flood prone areas in the F city, mm -hmm. green areas, and what have you. They have done that. Our main problem in the F city is attitudinal. People refuse to go through the legal means of really getting or acquiring land. And then, having gotten the land, also, there are structural measures that need to be taken by the authority before you start building. There is a, a engineering infrastructure. There is no land, no way you should allocate any land. That is even the Honorable Minister to allocate a land without engineering infrastructure. And that has been violated in the past, to be honest with you. But now, that, that is why some people are looking at the Honorable Minister as if he doesn't want to give land. But not because he doesn't want to give land, but where is the land to give? You are seeing land, but there is no engineering infrastructure. If that land is allocated, it's going to be a problem to FCT. And these are the problems that we had at Lokogoma. Lokogoma lacks engineering infrastructure. People built indiscriminately. There was no waterway. There was no flood prone area. There was no green area. Everybody built anyhow he or she likes. And that was why we had problem. You remember in 2018, we had to pull down over 200 houses mm -hmm. for us to have some kind of relief and in that true. area. Yeah. So, and we, that is continuing as well. So, uh, the laws are there. And I, like I said, we are privileged to borrow any law from anywhere by virtue of the federal capital territory. That Because since laws are just imagined, so we can borrow from Niger, we can borrow from Kaduna and come and apply here. So we, we have all the wherewithal to, to really control 
this. But the major thing is we are emphasizing on both structural and non-structural measures. These are the issues that we are tackling. And we are the part of the structural measures are those ones that are building indiscriminately. And we have to make sure that we identify those areas. And then another thing is there are there were some development that were did in the past. And because of the peculiarities of that time, you can see that uh, because the water volume was not high, so you can see just a box culvert. Now, the, the, we are changing the box culvert to uh, river bridges so that at least it will accommodate the run of water. And that has been giving us a, a lot of uh, really uh, sanity in the city. So the box, the, the box culvert will not be able to contain the water. Now it has been expanded to river bridge and that, that will now give you uh, access free flow of water. This has been, well, this is what we have been doing. And also we are all opening up those areas that I take, you know, clock areas where like. it's narrowed. At, at least the, the, we expand waterways so that the, the water can flow within the, the ways instead of over flooding. Yeah. And that has also helped structurally to really ease out the problem of over flooding, uh, I mean, uh, flooding of, uh, 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 in the FCT. So with the constant sensitization that we're doing uh, and then also monitoring the, the the climate change because you can't be doing things at, at the same time every year uh, and we are not getting results because the climate is changing we also have to change our strategy our adaptation has to change our mitigation has to change and our response also has to change and these are the areas that we focus looking at what happened this year what what happened last year yes we understood it last year to be able to really apply this year to protect and control flooding for this year and so this year what type of uh, change do we have the scenario if we look at the the persistent uh, uh, rainfall that we are having now we have a focus up to tomorrow thursday issued by by nine from uh tuesday wednesday thursday so um, probably by Friday, they will issue Friday, Saturday, Sunday again. We, ha we haven't had that last year. So that means there are changes in the weather situation that we live. So if you want to apply the same mitigation factors that you did last year, or the adaptation, or the response, then you are going to fail. Mm -hmm. Definitely you are going to fail. My responders, uh, uh, my response team have been on alert 24 7. When you get this alert, how do you alert the public? So, definitely, immediately we get the alert. We have, like I said,